Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Board, with a look at the new Amazon Fire TV, which retails for $100 and is here to take on the Apple TV, the Roku 3, and the Chromecast. Those are the more popular set-top boxes, and of course, Amazon has some weight behind it. Now, this parallels those devices, so offers very similar functionality, but has one distinguishing feature, among others, but the biggest one is voice search. So the remote control actually has voice search built in, so you can actually speak to the remote control to input text as opposed to using the on screen keyboard, which is always a hassle. So that's kind of nice here. And it also has some impressive internal specs, including Bluetooth. We have a quad core processor. In fact, you'll see it mentioned down here, quad core 1.7 gigahertz Snapdragon 600 processor along with an Adreno 320 dedicated graphics processor. We also have Wi-Fi with dual MIMO antennas and we have 1080p HD video up to 60 frames per second along with Dolby processing for 5.1 as well as 7.1 pass through. And again, of course, we have voice search. While this is an Amazon product, it doesn't just serve Amazon content. So we have lots of third party support from Hulu Plus, Netflix, Crackle, Bloomberg, Showtime Anytime, Watch On, ESPN, and many more more. We also have music apps such as TuneIn Radio, Pandora, iHeartRadio, and more. Now with those impressive internal specs, Amazon says that we get up to four times the performance of the Apple TV or the Roku 3, which gives us an opportunity for some impressive gaming performance. Now again, this is running Android, so these are pretty much Android games. So you can see all the gaming partners that Amazon is with, from EA to Sega to Gameloft to Ubisoft and more. And of course, we also have Amazon Game Studio, so Amazon is also developing its own games. Now with those games comes a game controller, which Amazon is selling as a separate accessory for 40 bucks. So we're gonna take a look at that in this video. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox this thing. And if you've ever unboxed one of the recent Kindles like the HDX, this is gonna be very familiar. Have a little tab here. And we're gonna go ahead and slide it out. Amazon Fire TV, we should have a little tab down here to pull to open up our box. All right, just gonna crack the lid here. And inside is our Fire TV. So there we go, we have the Fire TV, which is 4.5 inches on all sides and only 0.7 inches thick. So let me go ahead and I guess I have to tip it over here to get to it. There we go, we have some literature on the back, Amazon Fire TV. We're gonna set that aside for just a moment. Uh, some quick instructions on how to set it up, plug it into the wall, set up the remote, that sort of thing. We're gonna do that in this video. We have our remote controller. This actually reminds me of the Apple TV packaging, even the uh, the diagonal remote underneath the box. But there we go, it's a slightly larger than the, well it's actually quite a bit larger than the uh, Apple TV remote, but it's actually similar in design with that clickable D-pad and the minimal buttons, so you can see our navigation buttons. Let me go ahead and pop this out of here. Now like the game controller, the remote control also uses Bluetooth to connect to the uh, Fire TV. So let me go ahead and remove this plastic, which isn't coming off as easily as I expected. There we go. Uh, we have our battery compartment. Now this means that with Bluetooth, we do not need line of sight with our Fire TV, so you can hide it anywhere. This takes two AAA batteries, which should be included in here. So we'll set that aside for just a moment and get to that. So we have our power adapter for the Amazon Fire TV itself, wrapped in plastic. The design looks pretty sharp. I'm gonna go ahead and peel off all this plastic. So there we go, 16 watt, glossy on the sides, matte on the top and bottom. So inside we have our two AAA batteries, Amazon branded, for our remote. Now I just want to show you some of the thought and quality that went into this device. So even the battery connector down here is a little nicer than typical. So you can see it's spring loaded. It's actually very similar to the ones in the uh, Apple uh, Magic Mouse. So as you can see, we have our voice search button with the microphone. We have our directional D-pad with a center click. We have back, home, and menu, as well as our media controls. Now the remote has a really nice texture to it. It's actually very similar to the texture on a Kindle. All right, so let's get to the Fire TV itself, which is actually weighted. It's kind of heavier than something like an Apple TV, which tends to skirt around on a entertainment shelf, like mine kind of disappear with the weight of the cable. So this is weighted. It's actually got a weight built right into the chassis to keep it planted, so that's kind of nice. All right, just slide it out. Now we have a piece of plastic wrapping the glossy edges. There we go. Now it's kind of clear that the Fire TV takes after the design of the Apple TV, complete with the matte texture on the top with the glossy logo and the glossy sides as well. 
Uh, but of course you can see that this is a wider device, 4.5 inches, but it's also thinner than the Apple TV. So it's just a redistribution of the weight, but this definitely has more impressive internal specs than the Apple TV. Now if we look at the foot, we have this gripping material on the bottom as opposed to the Apple TV, which has a more rigid texture, which means that this has a tendency to kind of move around on smooth surfaces while this does a better job gripping it. Now the remote controls also look somewhat similar, but of course we have this all aluminum design with the Apple remote as opposed to the plastic. And of course this is a much larger remote control, which includes voice search and additional buttons. Now the Apple remote is using IR as opposed to Bluetooth in the case of the Fire TV. So on the back we have our power port, HDMI, optical, audio output, Ethernet, as well as a USB port, which you can use to expand storage or to access external media. Now they do not include an HDMI cable, so you will have to supply that yourself. Now interestingly is that these labels are in this sort of tower position, so you could, in theory I guess, uh, put this sideways, so you could stand this up on its side as opposed to laying it flat. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox the game controller. Again, same packaging here. Got a little tab here to open up. Pop the lid. Inside is our game controller along with our batteries right here. These are double A's. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Nope. Let's peel off the plastic. Now the game controller is very similar in design to something like the Xbox One controller. Same ergonomics, same button layout. So you can see we have a D-pad, we have our joysticks, as well as our media controls at the base. We have X, Y, B, A buttons, back, home, menu, and our power on pairing button for the remote. We have our shoulder buttons and our trigger buttons. You can also see we have our LED indicator back here for pairing and powering on. Toward the back we have our battery compartment. As you can see, I've already installed our Amazon branded batteries and we're good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up for the first time. I'm just gonna press start. Now it's scanning for my wireless network. So now I have to input my password, which is really the only time you're gonna see this on-screen keyboard. All right, so I've successfully connected to my network and then the first order of business is to update the software. All right, so once it restarts, you get this little animated tutorial telling you about the Fire TV. Fire TV lets you stream a huge amount of entertainment. And the Amazon Fire TV remote lets you access it all. Now once it goes through the tutorial, you can select your parental settings. So I'm going to say no parental controls. Now because I purchased my Amazon TV using my account on Amazon, they've already logged me in. So all my Amazon content is already here. I didn't have to enter in my password or account information. So on my home screen, we have this left column, which allows you to cycle between the various options you can take a look at. So we have our home screen, which is the home screen when you press the home button on the remote control, takes you right here. So you can see we have our recent activity. So these are apps and movies and things I've already looked at previously. So I just recently installed YouTube. I also activated Netflix, I have purchased the movie, and a few other things here. And if you look down below each item, you'll see we have options here. We can resume playback on this movie, add it to my watch list, or remove it. If we go to the app, Netflix, you can go to More Info or Remove from Recent, and same with the uh, YouTube app. So if you go to More Info, so you can see we have screen views. We can go to the left side here and go to App Details, Reviews and similar apps. Now we also have recently added to Prime. So these are just items that have been added to Amazon Prime recently and include TV shows and movies. So if, of course, if you're an Amazon Prime customer, you can play those free. We also have featured apps and games, featured movies and TV, recommended movies and TVs, top movies on Prime, top TV on Prime, new releases, top free games, recommended apps and games. Now under movies, we have recently added to Prime, we have shop new releases, we have recommended movies, top movies on Prime, shop top movies for the kids, recommended science fiction, recommended action and adventure, recommended fantasy, and on and on and on and on. So there's lots to look at here. All right, so if we go to The Hobbit, you can see I've already purchased this. Uh, I could also add it to my watch list. I can watch the trailer, and there's more ways to watch. So I can watch it in standard definition or HD, which I've already purchased. Now I can also resume playback. So for example, if I've been watching this movie on my Amazon Fire Kindle HDX, I can resume it on my Fire TV. Now when you're watching the movie, you can get to more options by hitting the menu button on the remote control. As you can see, it also pauses playback. But here I can change my captions. I can turn them on. I can change my languages if there are more available. I just have English available here. I can change my font size for the captions as well. And uh, there are a few other things here which are not in this movie, which include x-ray, which gives me information for things such as uh, the actors that appear in this scene and that sort of thing.
Now, on their watch list, I've just added one movie, but of course, you could add TV shows and other movies. Basically, this is a watch later list, so if I want to watch this later, at least I have a place to go without having to find this movie again. Uh, so I can remove it from watch list. I can watch the trailer. I get my reviews down here. If I click on the item, I can rent it for $4.99, buy it for $19.99. I can remove it from the watch list. I can watch the trailer, or I have more ways to watch. So if I want to save a few bucks in standard definition, I could do that as well. Now, in the left column, you see I also have cast information. So I can go right to the cast and even see the movies related to that actor. So, for example, Leo DiCaprio. I have several of his movies here. Looks like he's still trying to load the poster art, but there you go. If I want to watch one of their one of these movies instead, I can certainly do that. Now the video library contains every movie I've purchased, so right now that's just The Hobbit. So I can resume playback. We know where you live. And there we go. Now under games, I have my library. So they've included one game, Sev Zero. This comes with a purchase of the remote control. So if you buy the remote control, you get this game. So you can click on it and it will download it to your Fire TV so you can begin playing it. Now below that, we have our marketplace. We're picking up additional games. So for example, we can see what's spotlighted. So we can see the Sev Zero game, which they've included. We also have Minecraft, The Walking Dead, Asphalt 8, Airborne, and etc. So we have some game, uh, kids games as well. So let me go ahead and grab Asphalt 8. So you can see that's a free game, but not all games are free. So let me go back to uh, a, a game you have to pay for. So we have Minecraft Pocket Edition. So you can buy that for $6.99 or 699 coins. And as you can see here, I have 1,500 coins and that's because I purchased the game controller. So I can go ahead and buy this with those coins instead of paying with cash. Now, once again, on the left-hand side, you have some game details, you have your reviews, similar games. So let's go to Overview and purchase this for free. All right, we'll demonstrate games a bit later, but let's jump to our app. So we can see all the apps that we have installed, including our games, the YouTube app, and some of the ones that came with it, like Netflix, Watch ESPN, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Hulu Plus, Crackle, Vivo, Vimeo, Showtime Anytime, TuneIn Radio, and Bloomberg TV. Now, Showtime Anytime is kind of nice, although you do not have HBO Go at this time, although it can be sideloaded, apparently. Uh, but you just can't add your password to activate it yet. Now, under popular lists, we have movies and TVs, music, new releases. So if you select any one of these categories, again, you see all of the new apps in this category. If we go back, we can go to music apps. So we can see Pandora, iHeartRadio, lots more. Cello and uh, Red Bull TV are in there as well, all geared toward music, movies and TV apps. So you can see Plex is here as well, Crackle, uh, Showtime Anytime, Watch On, NBA, some apps we already have installed, Frequency. So you can see there's lots and lots of them, and I'm sure more will be added over time. Now under Photos, you can actually view your photos directly on your TV or use your photos as the screensaver. So there is an automatic screensaver in here that turns on, and they do include photos. But if you want to use your own, you can do that. You just have to upload them to Amazon.com. And you can use the app on, the, on your iPhone or Android phone. Uh, we also have settings, so you can see your help center, my account information, second screen, which you can turn off and on. This allows you to use your Amazon uh, Kindle as your second screen for getting additional information on what you're watching on your TV, such as a movie. We have applications, so you can go to your applications here, and you can, for example, if you want to take a look at Asphalt 8, let's click on that. You can see how much space is taken up. So you can see quite a bit, 1.1.5 gigs out of our 8 gigs of storage is quite a bit. You can force stop it, you can uninstall it, clear data, or clear the cache. You also have parental controls, so you can set that here as well. You also have your controller, so this is where you can add your Bluetooth gamepad. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up so we can play a game a bit later. All right, so I've paired my gamepad. I can now use this as my remote. Now we also have system settings. So here we can see about this device, which will tell us about our software and how much storage we're using. So as you can see, we only have less than three gigs available now. Uh, software version, serial number, uh, network information, controllers, we have two connected, and we can check for system updates. We can go back here and go to screensaver options. So here we can select our albums. So you can see I just have one which has 194 images that comes from Amazon. We can shuffle that slide style. So we have a variety of transition options we can choose from. Slide speed, start time. So you can select up to 10, 15, or never. So if you don't want the screensaver to activate, you can do that. And you can select your own album so you can see your own photos. We have Wi-Fi settings here, so you have more options. Join other networks, configure the network. We have quiet time, which I'm actually not sure what that is at this time, but if I figure that out, I'll tell you in the description below. We have collect app data usage. Actually, let me turn that off. We have collect app data usage or usage data, which you can toggle on and off. It's on by default. Developer options, display. So we have auto with no scale, but you can calibrate it yourself. And then we have audio. 
So you have several options here. You have Dolby Digital Output. Right now I'm just connected to my TV, so I can't really take advantage of Dolby Digital unless I connect it to my AV receiver. We have our time zone, which I've set automatically, legal and compliance information, and reset to factory defaults. Really, the standout feature here is voice search. So in order to activate it, no matter where you are on the device, all you have to do is press and hold the microphone button and speak. The Hobbit. Release it when you're done, and it searches for you. Finds The Hobbit, you can select it, and there you go. Gives me several options here. So I can select the one I want to watch. I can buy it, add to watch list, etc., etc. But there's more things you can do here. You could say Patrick Stewart. Select that. And it gives me all movies featuring Patrick Stewart. I could also say Netflix. Now I can launch Netflix. So let's take a quick look at Netflix. Now the interface is designed by Netflix. Amazon didn't take control over the UI design. So every app will have its own unique interface design. So that's something to consider here. But otherwise, things like Netflix are pretty well designed and pretty easy to navigate. So you can see you can log in, see all your previously watched content, uh, what's popular, and you can pick up from where you last left off. You can also search as well. Now, unfortunately, you can't use voice search in this case. You do have to input text in order to search. So if you want to use that voice search option, you're pretty much limited to Amazon content. Now, let me take you back to search, which is at the top. Now, you can search by voice or text. So I already showed you how to search by voice. Let's do text. So, for example, if I want to do Star Trek, just start typing. And it does pretty quickly here. So you can see it found it right away and searches for Star Trek. And you can see the, the interface is extremely fast and smooth. Now with the 3D acceleration, even the user interface is really quick and smooth. You can even see we get a little 3D animation over the uh, poster art here. So you can see that little glare effect there, which is kind of neat. You can select that and continue watching. It's just amazing how fast it is. Now this also has a feature called ASAP, which preloads content based on your history. So for example, if I start watching episode one, uh, or season one, episode two, it predicts that you will likely want to watch episode three next, so it will preload it for you, so you don't have to wait for it to download. So it works pretty nicely. Captain's log, started All right, so let's go ahead and play some games. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is that when you go to the game section and you hit the menu button on the remote control, you have access to your game circle profile. So this is kind of like Game Center for your Amazon account. So this allows you to keep score and to challenge others and to set your gamer tag as well as your avatar. So all of that is here. Now, interestingly, they came up with a gamer tag for me. So this is the one they came up with, Aspiring Fine Cyclone. So if I can select that and I can enter in my own gamer tag. So I'm going to go with Detroit Borg. All right, so let's go ahead and play one of these games. Now I'm going to play Asphalt 8. Now this will work with either your included remote control or you can use the gamepad that you buy separately. Now, Civ Zero is a much more graphically impressive game, so let's go ahead and check that out. I'm heading into the nearest dark matter refinery core. I can link to the network from inside. I'm activating the core's energy shield. Given the strength of the activity, it won't last long under a direct attack. Make sure they don't get that far.
So in conclusion, the Fire TV doesn't really revolutionize anything in terms of streaming set-top boxes, but it adds quite a few very useful features, including voice search that actually works, and then it also has some impressive internal specs for impressive gaming performance. So for $99, it definitely has an edge over things like the Apple TV and the Roku 3. So that's going to do it for me in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.